November 27, 2020, Mohun Bagan, nicknamed the Mariners, took on fierce rivals East Bengal, nicknamed the Germans, for the first time in the Indian Super League, the new first division of Indian football, the Kolkata Derby. It's the biggest match in Asia, which once drew a crowd of 131,000 in Salt Lake Stadium. Mohun Bagan, once dubbed the National Club of India, is the older of the two Bengali clubs. Its size, trophy case, age, and passionate following makes it the biggest club in the subcontinent, with only East Bengal being closed. Mohun Bagan's razzmatazz, glitz, and glory has an origin surrounded in myth when the first sparks of greatness foreshadowed the future. So let's go back. Before the roaring crowds, before the bloody derbies, before the tifos and trophies, all the way back to where it all began in the hot dust of the British Raj. July 29, 1911, the day an oppressed group of young men shocked an empire. This is the Unknown History of Football with Rish. You are listening to the Wasted Position Podcast. The Indian Football Association Shield, or simply the IFA Shield, is one of the oldest football competitions in the world. Started by British colonizers and military officials in India, it has witnessed many magical moments in its esteemed history. However, there was one moment specifically which may be Indian football's greatest. 100,000 people traveled from all over Bengal to Calcutta football ground. Trains and infrastructure had to be built specifically just to set up this event. The mighty East Yorkshire Regiment faced off against the barefoot boys from a 22-year-old club named Mohan Bagan Athletic Club. Silent Basu, the club's secretary and a soldier in the British Indian forces, coached the side with strict military discipline and conditioning. Basu's method caused the club to routinely beat both British regimental and club sides. Their efforts earned them their first invitation to the IFA Shield Tournament in 1909. Before diving into the discussion of formation and tactics, let's understand some old football vocabulary. The right in or the right out and the left in left out. Okay. The right out or the left out was effectively an attacking winger, while a right in or a left in was a supporting striker. In their 1911 campaign, Mohan Bagan used the pyramid formation a 2-3-5. So we're skipping ahead a bit. We're just going to go straight to 1911. So why are we going to 1911? Because it is really in 1911 where the modern Mohan Bagan club as we know it begins. And Mohagan kind of came to its own as this real force in the Kolkata game. They were doing very well in all the tournaments and they were beating teams, British, Indian, mix. And they were one of the most fittest teams. I mean, their military conditioning allowed them to have just iron lungs. They could just outrun, outwork everybody out there. And they built this real reputation in the football community, the fledgling football community of India at the time. Hiralal Mukherjee stood in goal. In front of him were Bhuti Sukul, the right back, and Sudhir Chatterjee, the left back. Sukul was originally a center forward who was converted into a defender. Despite the positional change, his attacking instincts never went away. Often the Maverick would be seen joining the forwards for an attack. His tackling ability was elite. He became the first example of an attacking fullback in the Asian game. Chatterjee, the only booted player in the team, was a perfect foil for Sukul. A slow defender with an excellent positioning sense who read the game from the back, giving the goalies some company. The midfield was the heart of this team. Three contrasting players, the hard-running centre-half Rajan Sengupta, covered every inch of the field, often venturing into the attack. Manmohan Mukherjee, 
nicknamed the Terrier, was the never say die attitude hard tackling shield of the midfield. By taking on the responsibility of the dirty work, he gave Nirmadhab Bhattacharya a freedom to be the creative maestro in the middle. Bhattacharya's precise passes unleash the dynamic front five of Bagan. Shivdas Baduri, captain, on-field manager, and the man who assembled team and willingly gave up his center-forward role to the powerhouse Abhilash Ghosh. Ghosh was the classic big and strong center-forward who muscled his way to goal or held the ball to bring everyone else in. Shivdas was the best dribbler in the team, nicknamed Mr. Slippery by the locals. The right house brother, Bijoy Das Baduri, played as the right in. The two brothers devised a plan to frequently switch positions, confusing opposition defenses, thus starting the tradition of fluid forward positioning in Indian football. A side note, the fluidity in attack would accumulate in Bagan's future rivals, East Bengal, devising the Pandava system of attack, a story which we might cover in a later. Suresh Chandra Sarkar, simply called Habdul, played as a traditional left-in, supporting the striker, and Jitendra Nath Roy, called Kanu, played as a traditional left-out blazing down the wing. The traditional left side of the field provided some much-needed um, comfort compared to the dynamic and often maverick right side which would see the right back bombing down the flanks while two brothers would pull magical switcheroos every few minutes. The Mariners swept aside St. Xavier's 3-0 to begin their IFA Shield campaign on July 10, 1911. Four days later, thanks to the heroics of goalkeeper Hiralal Mukherjee, Mohun Bagan held on to a 2-1 lead to beat Rangers FC. The quarterfinals saw the Kolkata club fight it out in an evenly contested match against Rifle Bridge 1-0. The semi-final ended in a draw against the Middlesex Regiment. They had a very special player. Piggott, a former Portsmouth goalie, was one of the best players in the subcontinent at this time. However, the very next day in the replay, Piggott received an eye injury. This allowed Captain Shibdas Baduri, Habdul, and Kanu to score a goal each t- to see a 3 0 domination. 100,000 people packed the Calcutta football ground. That fateful day, flying kites in, in club colors with the game's score written on them. The first half against East Yorkshire Regiment saw a nil-nil affair. With 15 minutes to go in the second half, East Yorkshire Sergeant Jackson scored to give the British the lead. This seemingly ended the cautious tactical war between the two sides as the Mariners pounced immediately scored with the striker and captain Baduri. The skipper's goal was the fuse which lit an explosion of maroon and green kites in the sky as the fans exploded with emotions. A few minutes later, the full throttle attacking barefoot Indians scored with powerful forward Abhilash Ghosh. A hundred thousand fans, an entire oppressed people, exploded as the slaves of an empire destroyed her regiments in a sport she invented. Mohan Bagan became symbols of hope and freedom within a matter of minutes, and the first all Indian side to take the shield. The players who took part in that glorious match became the legends known as the Immortal Eleven, heroes of a suppressed nation and icons of football history. Achintya Kumar Sengupta wrote, Mohun Bagan is not a football team. It is an oppressed country rolling in the dust, which has just started to rise its head. Never forget the Immortal Eleven Champions of the Oppressed. Be sure to check out all the Wasted Possession socials in the description below. Recommend us to your friends and maybe leave a rating. It helps us grow. Also, come over to Twitch every Friday at 7 p.m. GMT. There is the Wasted Possession Draft Premiership. Group B is playing today, the date of this release, and Group C is going to be playing next week. And it's going to be quite exciting. A bunch of streamers, some of our favorites, battling it out for the title of who is the best football manager on Twitch. 
Also, if you have a story, if you want to get involved with the community, if you want to hang out with us, hop on our Discord. The link's going to be in the description below. Thank you for tuning in, folks, and see ya.